How are you doing? This is Alex, and this is a continuation of if you could become a millionaire while being a valet attendant. And here's the bottom line. Yes, the answer is, but in order to do so, you have to invest your money. What I tell people, you cannot become wealthy off of one salary. Let's say you're a doctor, you're making about $150,000 a year. Can you become wealthy off of that? Mm, maybe, but not really. You have to give your money a job. And what I mean by that, you have to reinvest your money. So whatever money that you're getting in, you have your living expenses, but you have to invest. There's a saying called 70, 20, 10. And what that means is 70% of your money has to go to your living expenses. 20% of your money has to go into savings and 10% you can do with whatever you want to do with. That's the simplest way of doing life. So if you're making, a let's just say $1,000 a month, $700 has to go towards your living expenses, 20%, which is $200, has to go for savings, and then $100 you can do whatever you want. Now, if you take that on a higher level, just still divide those increments in the same type of way. If you make $10,000 a month, then again, $7,000 has to go towards your living expenses, um, $2,000 has to go towards savings and investments, and then $1,000 a month you can do whatever you want with. And that's a good way, so you're still staying healthy, you're still able to play, but you're very disciplined. Now, I kind of have a different method. I actually try to run off of 50. So 50% 50 of my um, take home goes toward my living expenses and not 70%. Number one thing anybody has to do, and this is what I'm gonna explain. Most of you have a debit card. And with that debit card, you have online banking access. Now let's back up. I hope everybody has a bank account. It is shocking to me to see some of the valets, uh, they, get, they still get physical paychecks because they cash their checks at check cashing places. They do not even have a bank account, a simple bank account, because when they've had one at one point or another, they weren't disciplined enough to keep it up and they've overdrawn, therefore they're not able to keep their banking up in good standings. That is first and foremost one of the most important things that you need to do to show yourself responsibility. So make sure you have a banking account. And a lot of people are like, well, duh. But yes, yeah, still, you can have that. Now they also have what? Robinhood. They have Acorn. They have all these little investment um, apps that you can use that you can put your money on online. So those are all great programs too, but be included with one of them or some of them or multiple. So number one thing, thing you need to do is use have a bank account and with that being said use that bank account to track where your money is hopefully you're using your debit card for most of the things or a credit card i don't want to get too far into that we'll get into that later but you have a debit card so it shows each and every transaction that you have now at the end of the month you need to look at it and print it all out and show what everything is going to. Is this going towards my living expenses? Is this going through my vehicle? Is this going towards my food? Is this going towards my entertainment? And then once you break that up, you have a pie and it's amazing to see where are you spending your money. You'll realize that your living expenses are actually not that bad, but where's my money going? I make $2,000 a month. How come I don't have anything left over? Ah, oh, Starbucks. I spend a lot of money in Starbucks. I spend $100 a month in Starbucks alone. I smoke cigarettes, a pack of cigarettes a day. Pack of cigarettes a day is $5, let's just say. Let's say you're smoking 20 packs, of, um, 20 packs a month. That's another $100 right there. So right there for Starbucks and cigarettes, you're spending $200 a month. People are like, man, I didn't realize it was that much. Let's say you're doing takeout food. Same thing, $5 a day. $5, well, that's nothing. Let's say $10 a day. That's a lot of money that you're spending that you can free up to now invest properly. So if you take a look at your budget and really see where there's areas where you can take that money and put it aside or invest it properly, then that's where you'll start really making some money. Now remember what I said, you have to give your money a job. You are not gonna become wealthy off of just one salary. You've seen the saying, and I'm sure many people have seen it, to be a millionaire, most millionaires have seven sources of income coming in at different times. So seven sources of income. Do you have seven sources of consistent income coming in every month? If you do, then you are on your path to becoming a millionaire. Other things that you can do, a lot of people I like Gary V. He's one of my good motivational speakers that I like listening to. One thing that attracted me to him and what his method was 
he go to garage sales and buy things and then resell them. You can go on eBay, buy things and then resell them or resell them on eBay. There's so many ways that you can make money, but the honest answer is a lot of people are lazy. Are you lazy? Because if you're lazy, this is not for you. But if you're hungry and you really want to go after it and you want to be successful and or wealthy, these are the methods that you can do. And again, I'm no tax expert. I'm not, this is just my personal opinion. So please don't get upset with me if it doesn't align with your path. But for me, it works in a lot of people. It actually works with them. Now, what's funny is this. A lot of my valets come in and we have our little powwows and we go back and forth with stocks and different things like that. And it's amazing because they're now starting to compete with each other. They all consistently put in $400, which is $100 per week. So $400 a month they're putting into the stock market and they are trying to see who has the most money. And they're picking whatever, all random things. Do you remember what I told you last episode about who do you invest in? Don't invest in the cryptocurrency. And if that's what your thing is, fine. Bitcoin, same thing. That's not my flavor. What I like, I like brands that I use. I use, well, not Starbucks, but I use Walmart. I use uh, Bank of America. I use Wells Fargo. So these are companies that I invest in. I use Home Depot. I'm at Home Depot every, at least two or three times a week. So I truly invest in Home Depot. I know people that invest in Starbucks. I invest in Delta. Deltas, every time I fly, that's the airline that I use. And what's amazing is during the pandemic, Delta went down hardcore last year. I think they went down, they were about $40 a share. They went down to 30, then 20, and then I think almost down to $16 a share. I bought in at $19 a share. They are up to just two days ago, $52 per share. So that's up almost 200, uh, um, almost 200%. So Delta is an incredible um, stock to invest in. Invest in what you know. I go to school and I talk to kids all of the time about, hey, how many people have an iPhone? It blows my mind that these kids are in high school with thousand dollar phone they're in school they don't really need this phone but they want the newest and hottest things i look on their feet and they have the newest jordans or lebron james or all these different sneakers that cost 150 200 i said you know what next time instead of buying a pair of air jordans for about 200 dollars, invest in nike stock so one of the kids and came to me and he said alex i invested i bought in at nike and i think it was like 80 dollars and it was up to $130 and he was so happy with the amount of money that he made that motivated him to keep going. And that's what I want. And that's what rewards me when I'm able to help people in such a way that they understand that, you know what, instead of buying the products, invest in the companies that make those products. Then when you truly become wealthy, then you can buy that stuff. But even then you'll start to realize that stuff's really not that important. I teach my niece and nephew Every year I give him a Christmas gift and it's usually, when I was younger I tried to spoil him, I tried to give him everything. But later on in life I realized, you know what, that's not the way to do it. I need to start teaching these kids more about responsibility. So I teach them instead of buying um, a share of, or instead of buying um, the Nintendo Wii or whatever, Sony PlayStation, I give them the Sony stock. I give them the Wii uh, stock, Nintendo stock, because what happens? If you look at certain things, where is that we next year? It's in the corner. They're not even touching it anymore. It's not the new hottest thing anymore. So I tell them, would you rather have that two or three hundred dollars or four hundred? I don't even know how much these gaming systems are now. Five hundred dollars, or would you rather have that gaming system? And they don't even care about the gaming system anymore. They're like, oh, I want that five hundred dollars. I said, what if that five hundred dollars is now worth six hundred dollars? They're like, oh yeah, I like that even more. So what I do, I give them shares of stock for Christmas, their birthday, instead of the actual product. I'll still buy them something nice, but I'm trying to teach them to rather invest in those products rather than inv or investing in those companies rather than investing in those products. So it's a good lesson to learn, and that's something that's really smart for everyone to learn. Now, if you do this and invest in these different strategies, then over time, there's something called compound interest, which is gonna be your best friend. I'll explain compound interest in another episode. 
but compound interest is what's going to blow you through the roof. Compound interest means, hey, I give you a dollar today. Tomorrow it's worth a dollar and two cents. The next day it's worth a dollar and four cents. The next day a dollar and eight cents. And it's small increments, but it's until it gets to the 20th, 30th, 40th, 50th day, then you'll really start seeing it grow even more. Well, your stocks act the same way. You can invest in a stock and that's the problem. A lot of people invest in stocks and they want that money immediately. It's not gonna work like that. In certain cases, yeah, you might, you might make some money here and there, but over time, that's where you make the money. So it's kind of like the saying, slow and steady wins the race. But so many people are get rich quick and it doesn't work that way. There's a famous investor, his name is Warren Buffett. I'm sure a lot of people have heard, uh, heard of him. I've met him a few times. He used to come to our college and speak. And one thing he told me that was amazing, all of the stocks that he trades are public. So you can copy him. I think he invests in American Express, um, Bank of America. I think he does, I don't know if he does BP, but he does all these different companies and they're all public. And there's no reason why you can't follow his path. And he's a multi-billionaire. And people ask him, hey Warren, why don't more people follow your investment strategy? And his answer, it was pretty shocking, but it was so true. Nobody wants to get rich slowly. So if you want to get rich quick, go ahead, try to do your day trading, try to do your cryptocurrency. But one thing he told us, do not invest in a stock that you wouldn't hold for 10 years for 10 minutes. So I'm not going to, if you want to invest in cryptocurrency, are you going to invest in it for 10 years? If you want to invest in Bitcoin, are you going to invest in it and hold on to it for 10 years? Honestly, I'm not because I don't trust a company well enough. And I've tried some of these things. I do. So the stocks, people will say, hey, Alex, what are you invested in? Obviously, I said Home Depot, Walmart. Um, what else? American Express. What are some of the others? One playful one I have that I use is Ferrari, which is R-A-C-E. That is the race code, uh, the stock code, but for Ferrari, because I like the product and everything like that. In 2013, I think Ferrari was one of the most powerful brands that was on the market. So you ask, what are the safe bets on what to do? I know I spoke about real estate before, a little bit about um, the IRAs, which is what you need to do. We can speak about that later. There's traditional and Roth IRAs, which we'll talk about in a later episode. But what you can truly do, what stocks can you invest in today? What are the powerhouses that we know of? There's Amazon. What else is there? Netflix is pretty good. You know who performed really well over the past two years? Domino's. Domino's Pizza is incredible. Also, and Domino's has been a powerhouse for a long time. Um, Apple, Google, those are all strong companies. If you take your invest money and invest in these companies, you will not go bad. What were the strong stocks in the 90s? What, Microsoft, Oracle? Those are still strong companies. If you invested in those stocks then, you would still be doing well now. What were in the 80s when we were born? Uh, IBM? IBM was an incredible stock. What's the other one? Hasbro. Hasbro. Hasbro was a toy company. G.I. Joe's, Transformers. I loved all of the. Those are super strong companies. So bottom line is if you invest in any of these companies that are solid companies with a good track record, then you cannot go wrong. But you have to be consistent. You have to be disciplined and you have to be able to start with that $500 a month. So on some other episodes, if you guys like these little investment points and things like that, let me know. I'm extremely passionate about it. I can speak forever about it. I love talking to people about it, but I want to see people successful. And even if I change the, the life of one person, then honestly, that touches me in my heart. I've done my job. So have a good day. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching.